Hi, Michelle. Hi, Michelle. <laughs> it's a new episode of American Idiots Abroad. Hi, welcome back to American Idiots Abroad. On this podcast, we discover what makes us uniquely American by analyzing the differences and similarities between the U.S. and the U.K., with a little help from our friends, of course. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Megan. I grew up in the Bay Area, which is in California, and I started studying here back in 2014, and yeah... And yeah, <laughs> I'm AJ. I grew up in the Boston area. I crossed the pond about three years ago, and yeah. And yeah. <laughs> and this is our very special guest here to talk with us about fashion this week. Ooh. I'm here to talk about fashion, and I've got my boyfriend's T-shirt on, my leggings are on Inside Out, and I'm covered in dog hair. <laughs> She's not lying when she says her leggings are on Inside Out. I didn't even know. But they yeah. are. But I do have Vivian Westwood special edition shoes on. Hey, and they and they got little bees like uh, you're proper mank today. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I only ever drive in Vivians, so. <laughs> oh, do you? Yeah, Ooh. that's because I can't drive in anything but flat shoes. Oh, can you not? No. I don't know if we said your name yet. Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fashion icon, soap star, and co-host of her very own podcast. This is Jess Ellis. Co-host? Yeah, I was host. Of I was own. thinking, who do I co-host with it? Rita, with Bob, and Bob. Rita. Oh, with Bob and Rita. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> host of her very own podcast. This is Jess Ellis. Hello. That we have a kids cheering effect. It's yeah. very oh, nice. Well, well, I, I downloaded it from the internet. Thank you, internet. <laughs> so Jess is sporting um, Vivian Westwoods. Is that what you said? Yeah. Yes. Have you ever tried to wear high heels, AJ? No. Should Do you I? Wanna? <laughs> As we said, today's topic is fashion. Fashion is very different in this country. To be quite frank, I feel like on the whole, fashion here is a lot more advanced. Yeah. I feel like it's sometimes a lot more varied. when you go to America, it feels like you're in 1998. <laughs> New York is different. Yeah. Because it's obviously like London. It's a di- But other than that, the other places I've been in America, I feel like everyone is really behind. I didn't know how behind I was until I came here. And then I was like oh my God, I gotta get a new fucking everything because I can't dress to save my life. Oh yeah, I'm watching Teen Mom at the moment. Teen Mom. <laughs> oh my God. Um, Is it Teen Mom or Teen Mom? Because they're very, they're two different Well, shows. I've watched all, I've watched all the English one, but I've just started watching um, the American one. The way that they dress and is, I feel like is what people were wearing a few years ago here. I haven't noticed, and maybe this is just because I'm not like a fashion person at all, but I'm going to be very enlightened in this episode. Mm. There's something interesting here where like, where a lot of people will wear like vintage clothes or like yeah. vintage inspired clothes, and for some reason that looks more in date <laughs> than the US does. Yeah, because I'm from Manchester, which is like 40 minutes away, mm-hmm. but the fashion is different mm-hmm. from Manchester to Liverpool. The one thing I like about them is that it's like old school. It's like... Mm-hmm. In the 50s, like, they live for the weekend. Like, they work all week, and then they get proper dressed up for uh, the weekend. So they get, like, a new dress. They have their hair done. They get their makeup done. They get their nails done. Like, I'm used to living in London where, like, you just go out straight after work and everyone's really cash. Mm. But here, like, on a Sunday, you'll see girls in, like, proper fancy dresses. Yeah. Or when the horse races. Or, oh, yeah, yeah ladies. Oh, that. so that's when, I, when I first came to the UK, I was only here for two days, and in those two days, that was the weekend where Aintree. the horse races. Oh, yeah. My God. For our uh, listeners who don't know, Liverpool has a annual horse race. What's it called again? It's entry races, so they've got, like, the Grand National. Grand National. But then they have Ladies' Day the day before. What's that? Mm. So Ladies' Day is, like, they have, like, a fashion, like, so you get best dressed, and it's all about, like, the ladies. That makes sense, because mm-hmm. you see people walking around with nice poofy hats. Like, like you win. Everyone dresses like the queen. This year they won, like, the, <laughs> they the woman won, like, a Range Rover or something. What? Yeah, they, but, they win crazy prizes. But Fuck Ladies' yeah. Day is kind of, like... Daily Mail fodder. Yes. Because then there's, like, loads of pictures of, like, people with tags on. Do you know what tags are? Like, from the police, round your ankle. Oh, no. no. So people might, like, do a crime, like, do something, and then they'll, instead of going to prison, they'll be on tag, which oh, means... house arrest, like ankle bracelet. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so there's, like, pictures of that, or, like, pictures with girls with their asses out, which, like, obviously people get pissed, but it's kind of been made into this weird Daily Mail 
It's fun though. I really yeah. enjoy it. Yeah, like, right. I went this year. Oh, did you? Yeah, what yeah. Was it like what did you wear? An outfit from Outfit. Okay. Um, it was like a blue and orange dress. Hard segue. I feel like there's that misconception about this country that like because it rains all the time, people wear wellies. That's one thing. What, what's a wellie? Is it like a raincoat? Rain boot. Rain boot. It's like what people wear to festivals. Is that a British word? It's well, short Welling. for Wellington, right? Wellington boots. Yeah. yeah. It's a so brand. like Paddington Bear, he wears Wellington boots. When I was first coming here, like people were telling me, you need to buy wellies, you need to buy wellies, like you need to come prepare. Americans <laughs> or British then, people? American people. Oh, okay. And they're like, you're going to need them. And then I was like, well, if I need them, I'll just buy them there. But I was convinced that I was going to need them. Oh my God, that's so... I've only ever wore wellies in a field. And actually, I think when I wore them, like it was hot and the grass was hard. I didn't need them. I feel like fashion is like a bit more edgy here i like wearing wacky like if it's just like a comedy shoe my friends back home always used to be like what the fuck are you wearing uh, maybe this wasn't a thing in the uk but do you remember when like those steven tyler feathers put like putting feathers in your hair was a thing <gasps> no because my sisters both did that where you would oh, just you would get feathers yes. woven into your hair yes was it a thing like maybe like 15 years ago where you would like get a string and like i still get it tie? done do yeah. you yeah yeah <laughs> Funny. But my my dad always used to say, like, when when I was in London, he'd be like, you wouldn't be able to walk around uh, Reddish, that's where I'm from, you wouldn't be able to walk around Reddish like that, would you? And I think it's that thing of, like, you, you could, but you would stick out, like, a sore thumb. But in London, you just... I think it's just more creative, and it's just bigger. And there's a lot of different cultures and different people there, so people feel like they can express themselves. When you dress for award shows, do you... Because that's something that I've always found really interesting, mm. is, like, I look at, like, Met Gala, or, or even, like, the MTV Video Music Awards, where people just go because it's a whole event within itself of just the, the of red how they dress. Do you ever Do you ever go in and, like, think, like, this is going to be someone's headline for... Like, <laughs> tactically, yeah. Yeah, like, tactically dress crazy the or? last so i wasn't at the super awards just gone but the my last one was the year before and i actually like my friend made the dress and i was like inspired by someone's outfit the met gala so she had like um a rainbow cape we just took an aspect of it yeah so it was pride month when the award season was so i had a purple dress and then i had um, a rainbow cape yeah, um, and it was like it did it did make it into all the things. And then my one my second year I had um, shoes made for me with TVs on, and one of the TVs had like you probably wouldn't have had this in America, but back in the day when like TV stopped, there was like a picture of a girl and a chalkboard. It's oh. really weird. <laughs> so that was on one, and then the other one was like um, continuous pictures of Hollyoaks. So it looked like it was playing TV. What? On your shoes? Yeah. That's cool. Did that make it, like, like I, I remember, like, I was pointing out, maybe not as much as the rainbow cape, but I feel like if I ever got, like, in worse dressed, like, that was good for me. Because most of these people that are judging, like, don't know a fucking thing about fashion. Like, they're, they're saying the best dress is just someone, like, with a really skimpy dress on. Like, yeah. I had this shirt once from Lazy Oaf, and it, like, had, like, Heinz beans on it, but it was, like, has been and, like really like ironic phrases about that and I thought that was really funny and cool to wear and it was just like a shirt and people just didn't get it and I was like I'm on worst dress and that means it's I good. like looking through worst dress though because they're usually the most interesting and thought exactly yeah and then also like I'm kind of a believer that you know you still got publicity all publicity is good publicity yeah of course You could spot a group of Scouse girls. Oh, definitely. Yes. Just like you might say, oh, they're German or whatever. Yeah. Like, you can... You, I love playing that on holiday. Like, where do you think those people are from? Mm -hmm. Just from their fashion and the way they look. Like, I Did could, you do that on holiday just recently? Well, I mean, I was in Wales. There was just sheep there. <laughs> <laughs> when they know shows are going to be, like, syndicated, like, friends, when they know that that's going to be around for, like, a long time, the costume designers will dress everyone in, like, plain clothes that are, like not expirable so that they like, will like last they yeah always like just black like, black t-shirts yeah. and like just plain jeans and all that kind of stuff so you don't look back at it and go ooh that's so dated. super dated yeah but Basically. when i go home i'll see guys wearing like visors like like teenagers you know how you Golfing see visors yeah like okay so but not like california not, shit you know how you see like instagram fashion and or like pinterest fashion and it's kind of like ironic yeah. 90s fashion yeah you'll see people dressing like that where i'm from one of those fanny packs yeah things. what is this thing what people I... are wearing bum bags across their 
chest. I low-key love it. Listeners, a bum bag is a fanny pack because in this country, a fanny is a vagina and you don't want to say, I got my fanny pack on. Yeah, it's very strange. (laughs) I remember like being a child and that being in American films and being like... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> like, it was like, oh, my God, that's even funny, pile. That's so stupid. Bum bag <laughs> sounds like something that you would bum like. Bum bag also is an f- absolutely shit name. Yeah. Like, it's yeah. not on my bum. I don't know why it's just not called, like, a waist bag I or a hip thing. bag. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. And bum bag sounds like something you'd get, like, put in you at a doctor's. Have you been watching Love Island? <laughs> no, no, I wish. But I just find it really fascinating just watching these people. But that we <laughs> were laughing that this fashion of having a bum bag fanny pack around your shoulder and me and Michael Michael's my boyfriend was like where the fuck are you going like you're trapped in a villa like Mm -hmm. what's in there (laughs) (laughs) do you think on reality shows that they dress them well I think there's a big thing now with fashion like a lot of the girls like if you look at it uh, because they're not allowed to have any labels or anything and that's always been the rule yeah yeah but um, they're, so if they've got like an outfit on, then like now companies, they're selling them. Oh. So they must give them all the clothes. And then like, even I was driving through Liverpool and there was a billboard of one of the girls and it was like, get the look. And it was what she was wearing the night before. Like, it's clever. Oh, that's really clever, yeah. actually. Yeah. When we talk about like nights out and how people dress for that, I always mm. find it really interesting. My friends always think it's crazy how many girls will be walking around in nothing. Yeah, so to our American listeners, Everywhere you go in this country, it doesn't matter what the weather is outside, there will be a group of women, at least one, walking around in, like, band-aid dresses and nothing else except maybe, no like, coats. a little purse. No coat. For guys maybe listening to this, band-aid dresses are... Like, mini dresses that are, like, skin tight. Um, yeah. and Because like, I don't know what band-aid dresses are. I think oh. you, you especially find this in the north, I think. Yeah. yeah. Like, the north is obviously colder than the south. Yeah, I've been walking around, it's literally snowing out, and people are walking into town with no coat, high heels, stilettos on, and a little band-aid dress, and I'm like, kudos, I couldn't do it. Yeah. I couldn't do it. <laughs> they, but we used to call it, uh, like, I would not do that now, but when I was younger, we used to do that a lot, and we'd just call it your beer coat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. just drink as much as you can until you've got a little I do that on. all the time. It's interesting because if I'm wondering whether I'm going to bring a jacket to the club or something, because it's cold out, it'll be like winter time or something, but I'll be like, do I bring a jacket? Because I just basically have to bear it on the way there, and then uh, when I leave, I'll be so drunk that it won't matter. Yeah, you know exactly. What I mean? mm. Like, I'm 32, so fashion is... Like, getting me now as well. Like, this underboob thing, I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> that is such a thing this, right now. Like, especially with the girls, again, to go to Love Island, like, they're wearing bikinis, right? Where, they, like, so your nipple is covered, and then this top bit, and then the rest of your tit hangs out the at the end. Like, for me, that looks like it just, you got too, it was too small. Like, I don't mind a bit of side boob in a nice dress, but I don't <laughs> get this, like... Yeah, so I'm getting a bit like that now. Like, so maybe like I'm getting a bit old. See, because I I kind of like the underboob, like only because like I feel like it's just an extension of the side boob. One thing that I've not tried yet that I see a lot in this country that actually Jess is sporting today are dungarees. <laughs> Dungaree dress. Yes, or which are, to us, overalls. So that's, like, super popular. Dresses or just normal, like... I wear the, like... I feel like you go through stages in your life where, like, there's a staple thing. Like, I remember years ago, you used to wear, like, little jean shorts, but with, like, tights. That was a thing. Yeah, that was a thing. Um, And I just... That's all I used to wear. Or, like... I don't know, a few years ago, I always just used to wear, like, skinny jeans... Uh, and a shirt or like a statement like weird 90s jumper or something oh my god that's literally the phase i'm in right now this this i just find so if i'm going out i wear like a a nice shirt or a t-shirt or whatever my my friends used to say that like i dress like a kids tv presenter (laughs) <laughs> and 100% do <laughs> that's so accurate and I so own that and fucking love it you <laughs> yeah, 100% do especially when you had uh, pencils in here so, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah that's the vibe I'm Are, going do we for. have any pencils in there now no no, no. no. We, sorry folks no no pencils <laughs> I feel like I dress so boring today. No, you came to my house and you had like a big old, you had like a basketball top on didn't you 
Um, oh, I oh I was wearing a Bruins jersey. Yeah, you're wearing right? a jersey. I feel like AJ dresses much, much, much more American. Well, the way you were dressed at my, my house, yeah. I was like American. It's yeah. my identity, though. Uh, uh, this is something that my friends have always told me that I've never really realized. I'm always wearing some variant of like red, white, and blue. You fucking um, you like always, do. always because they're the, because yeah, that's they're what so, you're wearing now. I'm wearing red and white right now. I'm not wearing any blue. But it's because you're so patriotic. I, I don't yeah. think it's even patriotic because it's like we have the same colors here. Um, <laughs> yeah, this is true. Yeah, like same same colors on the Union Jack as the American flag. But I, just, I don't know. I just think they're like very like basic colors. But I kind of love that. Like my go to outfit for anything is just wearing if shorts if it's summer or or skinny jeans if it's not. But and then a white t shirt. When I perform, all I do is perform in white t-shirts and jeans. Yeah. Oh, interesting. I'm not wearing sweatshirts. I'm not like Ed Sheeran, like, oh, I don't have to dress up on stage. Like, it looks... I think it's nice to have a uniform. Yeah. Mm. Like, if you're gonna, if you're talking about performing, like, you know, sometimes it's just nice to separate yourself from that. And, and also, like, not to think about it. Like, you're just mm. like, oh, I've got a t-shirt on. That's what I wear for my stuff. So yeah. it's not That's what I wear in real life, though. I just think it's like kind of a simplicity right and that's also like my hair used to be fucking crazy i used to dye it braid it even and like put it in different like hairstyles i had like a ponytail when i first came here oh i would like to talk about the british haircut yes just kind of like how all the girls do their makeup a very different way than americans all Mm -hmm. the guys have their hair cut a different way okay it like is always that like from their neck to the top of their head it's always that like fade of more and more and more hair there's long hair on the top or longer right but then all, all the sides are super short yeah the hair gets shorter as you go to the neck when i first came here i would not get haircuts unless I went back to the States. Oh, really? Oh. I'd never been to, like, one of these um, places where I wouldn't know the hairdresser. They would just give you whoever's on the job. Yeah. So I had to, like, put my trust in that. Uh, and every time, it sucked because they would always want to give me the... The, the British haircut. They were, and I short was like, back and sides. Yeah, short back and sides. It's almost and like an like, army haircut, that. isn't it? Mm. Like, yeah. Mm. Yes, exactly. And I was like, I, I love it. I don't want that. No, it just it's never so looked... It's so clean. It never looked good on me. I, I knew I wasn't going to go often enough to keep it up. And it was just like, I don't want to look like everyone Yeah, they else. have to go all the time. Mm. Like, I know boys that go, like, every week. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Their hair just... As soon as that, like, faded bit starts to grow out a bit. They get insecure about it when it yeah, grows it's, it's like a trick. Like, it's like a part of their routine like Super they have hair. like cat wigs here do you know what a cat wig is no oh my god like a ketamine wig yeah so this is like this, what this is like a liverpool thing so have you seen that like a lot of like teenagers as well like people might have like a big mop of like curly hair or mad hair like mine but like boys like mm-hmm. like when i was at school like boys would not be seen dead with long hair really like never it was like short back and sides or they did this really weird thing where they would have a completely shaved head and then just a fringe but they would separate the fringe with gel <gasps> oh my god that look that oh, look is so no. rough um, or, or they would like uh, dye the top of their hair with like sun in so they look like a pint of guinness oh uh, yeah yeah yep. cat wig is basically a saying that that you've taken so much care that you just let your hair grow. Let's yeah, do Google Catway, guys. <laughs> but I always used to be, like, a bit edgy with my hair, especially mm. when I was younger. Like, I was, like, fucking Tony and Guy's dream, like, no <laughs> hawks and stuff. But then, also, as an actor, you have to be careful. But the thing that was exciting about being in Hollyoaks was it was up to them. Like, so mm. it wasn't like I was like, oh, God, if I cut my hair, do I need new pictures? It's going to affect my casting. Like... It was fine. Like, the fashion on Hollyoaks. So when you get there, like, you have a discussion and stuff. But I went to... At the time, I was wearing, like, bows in my hair. So is this your personal style with the bows? Or is yeah, this so it was the my, it was style? my personal style at the time um, when I was auditioning. Were they, like, Tegan Needs bows as yeah. well? Yeah. Really? So then I stopped wearing them. because I used to wear them all the time. But then I just it became, like, a thing for her. I remember, like, on one of the first days, you take Topshop and you get, like, a personal shopper. And then you just, like... Get all this stuff, but mine ended up just being like a, a more exaggerated version of myself. So it was like really out there and wacky and oh, cool. loads of vintage and that me- like in my first few years, mental. I, I used to wear capes and stuff. Did you like it? I love that. Well, yeah, I kind of liked it because like a lot of it, I was like, I'd never fucking wear that. Yeah. But also, they they let me have a lot of input as well towards the like once I'd been there for a while, like I had a real input in it. But yeah, some of the outfits were fucking 
awful. <laughs> what you just said about separating yourself from your character when it comes to like how you express yourself fashion wise, mm. was it just the bows that did that? I've never thought about that. Like how a character that you that you are playing yourself that you grow to become maybe even in love can actually spoil other aspects of your real yeah, life yeah definitely because you know it's not like playing a character that already exists mm -hmm. or a character in a book or in a film in a marvel film whatever this is a brand new character in a brand new so so it's like pretty much just an extended version of yourself because there is nothing really to go off. Apart from, you know, they would say to you, right, this has happened in your life, your mum and dad, whatever. But unless you're like a serial killer or a, like, mm. or you're just a normal girl everyday life, like, that just comes from you. Mm. So I guess, like, the bows were one. And also, I think, like, just trying, if you were going on a night out or whatever, just trying to make yourself look so different to mm. them. It's like that annoying little sister that you didn't want hanging around. You've like, no, I just want to break free from that and I want to look oh. different. If you're like a bit of a scally and you're like a scouser, a lot of them wear North Face stuff. Yeah, They're, puffy black jackets. Yeah, or like sportswear. Yeah, like joggers. Yeah. Or then you've got like people that look like they've just come out of top shop, so they've got like a cool shirt on or whatever. Then you've got like posh guys wearing mm. like pastel colors. Yeah. So this is a big thing where I'm from. I remember, especially in my school, I grew up dressing in like all black because I was like I'm in a rock band and you know I you like goth and no I was like I really liked that as that skater aesthetic like yeah. I only had like Osiris's like those big goofy shoes I wore those when I was a kid I had those but I had them in like black and neon green and I remember I liked black and neon green like I thought that was cool and I had like the monster energy t-shirt or something even though I was afraid of energy drinks Brilliant. because of how terrible they were for you. And like, <laughs> my parents are like low-key nutritionists, so like I was dressing on all black. And then I remember, I think it was like my junior year or my sophomore year where they would say to me, oh, you know, you should wear like more pastel, like, you know, like more preppy clothes. You like don't... with a jumper like tied around your... Yeah. Not like that. But, but like... people for sure do that here. Yes. <laughs> people for sure do that here. People were like, oh, you know, you should wear more like pastel colors. Like you'd look a lot more like put together or whatever. Whatever. I remember the pressure and I went out and I bought like only pastel clothes and then wore them for like two years. That's a lot of pressure. And then I came here and then I was like, fuck that. Should we go over different names for different yeah. items of clothing? Yeah. So we already covered fanny pack and bum bag. Another one that's different would be trackies. Yeah. We would call it a like sweatpants. Yeah. Or what we call like a wife beater, like that white. What is a that? A vest. Like yeah, you guys call it a vest. But the thing I find so interesting here is that someone told me that they call Estella Artois a wife, wife beater. Wife beater, yeah, I was just because, say that. Because people who drink Stella Yeah, you, here... it'd be like, oh, can I have a pint of wife beater? Really? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you wouldn't say you you wouldn't say that to the barman or whatever, but people might say, like, if, oh, some, order me if, a someone, pint of wife if someone was going like, to like a pint of Stella, you'd be like, oh, what, you want the wife beater? That's another really big thing here is, like, getting yeah. lip fillers. Like, I know that that's a big thing in L.A. Call, you can literally, but... like, walk down the street and just walk into your hairdressers and get it done. Mm. Really? Yeah, it's mm. that accessible and they're like terrible. That's why they look shit. You know, it's not like booking into a proper place. Like yeah. you could get a pedicure, get your fanny wax and get your lips done at the same time. Do you know what I mean? Like And but wow. some like if you if you spend good money and you go to a good place, like they will make them look really good apparently. Like I've never done them, but one of my best friends did and they look very very natural yeah. on her. We use different clothing sizes mm. for shoes and for just like every item of clothing, really. For shoes in the United States, I'm like an eight, eight and a half. But in this country, that equates to a five, five and a half. So in the U.S., they separate shoe size by, by gender. gender. Whereas in this country, men and women and anyone in between all use the same sizes. I have a question for you guys. Do you think that Americans wear more American flag clothing than British people wear Union Jack clothing? Yes. Yes. Yes? Like, I would say, like, the only people that would wear, like, Union Jack clothing would be tourists. We wear a lot of, 
like jumpers and t-shirts with like I don't know American football teams on or college teams that yeah. we don't actually know the amount of people wearing the Boston Red Sox caps around town and they have no idea that it stands for my, my friend May who was like this the proper camp gay guy just had this jumper that he'd got from somewhere and it was like this American or Canadian football team or something and he just liked it because I had like a picture on it yeah. oh my god but we wouldn't like the only thing that we would wear is like football shirts or actually or rugby. if you go into like River Island um, or Topshop there will always be like something that says California on it or like Los Angeles yeah or New all, York yeah there yeah. will always be at least one shirt when I first came here I realized that actually all the Americans that I knew here all wore denim which was weird because it's something that like we didn't really wear back in the states, but I feel like it's also like me just wearing only red, white, and blue almost exclusively for my closet. It's just I've never felt more American before I came to the UK because um, it is now your identity. Now everyone projects Americanness onto you, and you have to like mm. re- like claim some of that. Yeah, I felt like that when I lived in London as well. Like mm. I was like the Northerner, the token Northerner. Yeah, you do take that identity on, and it almost becomes like a caricature of it. Yeah, like it becomes your identity. Yeah, more so than if you were surrounded by people who more were so born. than ever before. Like because I was always lived in the north, I never talked about being mm. northern. It was never a discussion. Just like you being American and being in America, you don't talk about being American. Like yeah, except exactly. on this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but now but, that, but now that's because you're in England. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Like, exactly. yeah. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank no, you, Jess. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having us earlier. Yeah. If you want to hear our episode of... Oh, yeah. Dilemmas with Jess Dilemmas Ellis. with Jess Ellis. I love saying it. So come and listen to my episode with you guys. Dilemmas with Jess Ellis. We finished on our 20th episode. We've had a bit of a break over the summer, but we're coming back. Bigger and badder and better. So you can binge watch the first yeah, please 20 episodes. Binge watch. Binge, watch. <laughs> binge listen the first 21 episodes. Please binge. If you're going on holiday, take someone else's problems away, not yours. Mm. Ooh. Yeah. We'll be back in September time with new guests, new dilemmas. So keep an eye out. It's obviously available on all podcasts. Please subscribe, rate, and review. And what are your socials? Where can I find you? Mine is at Jessica Ellis UK, I think. Someone said that for me. Yeah. Years ago, <laughs> um, but yeah, all my socials for the podcast is at Dilemma Jess, um, and that's Instagram and Twitter. If you've got any dilemmas, please slide into my DMs. Yes, exactly. I am the modern day Agony Anne, and hopefully, I can sort out any dilemma you have. She definitely is. We did some good dilemma solving on our episode, so again, check that out. And AJ, where can people find you? At AJ Marks Official on all platforms, and I have two songs out on Spotify and Apple Music and all that and you have a new song out yes I do so I have a new song out it's called Closure you can find me at I am Sola Music please slide into my DMs let me know what you think of it give us some love and um, if you hate it then then also let us know yeah Um, (laughs) and so here is a little sneak peek at Dilemmas with Jess Ellis this is an episode in which she had Duncan James on the podcast so here it is so I have to pick a jelly bean. Right, so you have to pick a jelly bean. You right. can't pick a blue one. Okay. And not because you were from blue, but because it's rubbish. It's like blueberry or toothpaste. And to me, that's what's wrong with toothpaste. <laughs> um, so the others are like... Um, okay, are there some gross ones then? Yeah, cat food or cola, strawberry or fresh blood, which is supposed to be like fresh arse. Ooh. You might like that. <laughs> Tutti frutti or rotten milk. Ooh. Um yeah, so All right. So go for it. You pick one. Are we going for green? Yeah. Okay. Ready? Oh, my... <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh! <laughs>